Right, my name is Keith Oak. Um, I'm from Haven Sixth Form College Geology Department, and my aim uh, during this uh, quick uh, session is to show you how to um, carry out uh, a dip and strike measurement on a bed of rock, and I'll introduce you to the compass chronometer. Right now, um, one of the main tools that we use in geology field work is this thing called a compass chronometer, as it says in the name. It is both a compass for working out uh, where you are relative to north as an angle, uh, but also you can use it as a clinometer um, to work out the angle, for instance, that a bed might be dipping at. It might be inclined from the horizontal. Also, um, it's got a handy little mirror so you can check that you're looking good. Uh, on this case, I'm looking fine. Um, so let's have a quick look at this. Um, this is the compass part. Here, just if you're used to using compasses, it's just like most normal compasses. Um, you'll see as I move it uh, around. In fact, um, as I move it around, there's this red bit here that always points to to north. The white bit is always pointing to south. Now, um, for our purposes, we're going to call that red part there, Fred. Bear with me. Um, what also um, we've got is this part here. Uh, which is sometimes called the bezel, which you can move around uh, independently. That also has a red part underneath. You may or may not be able to see it from there. Maybe, um, and that's called the bed. So we've got Fred and we've got his bed. It'll make sense in a little while. So we can basically move this bevel around and we can read off a number here, uh, which is a number from 0 to 260. For instance, I can move it here. and that's at zero or 360 degrees and that basically means it's pointing due north. If I move it so it's got E, east there, that's 090, 90 degrees. If I turn it so that south is there, that's 180 degrees and so that west is pointing there, that's 290 degrees. So um, we can actually have an, a number there that tells us which direction a feature is going in. It could be a bed, the strike of a bed, it could be a fault, it could be a dike, uh, something along those, those lines. So when I talk about use the compass, uh, that's what I'm talking about. We can also convert this into a clinometer that can then tell us whether the, uh, the angle at which the surface is inclined. To do that we need to put it into clinometer mode and all you need to do is to move it so that the east is over there next to that fluorescent strip there and the west is next to this one here. So I'll just do that so it's precise. So can you see uh, the way I've got the, the lined uh, east and west. It's also important that you'll see at the back of this there is a protra protractor part here that goes from 0 to 90 degrees and back up to 0 there. This is the bit where you're going to actually going to be reading off the angle. Zero being horizontal, like now. Ninety being vertical, like now. If you look really closely, you should be able to see a little red arrow here that's always pointing straight down. Can you see it? No. Not getting a shake of the head. Oh well. Uh, do you have to trust me? There's a little red arrow that uh, just there, and it points to one of the numbers down here. So there it's pointing at zero, which means it's horizontal. There it's pointing at 40 degrees, which means it's inclined at 40 degrees. There it's at 90 degrees, which means it's vertical. So that's a clinometer mode. So let's have a think about compass, uh, about dip and strike. Definition of strike is that it is a horizontal line on a surface. The definition of a dip is the maximum angle that a surface is inclined from the horizontal. Now it just so happens that both of those features are at 90 degrees to each other. So the dip is at 90 degrees to the strike, the strike is at 90 degrees to the dip. So let's see if we can work out the strike and dip of this bed here. If we can work out the strike and dip of this bed here. 
So first thing we're going to do is find out the strike. As we said before, the strike is a horizontal line on the surface. If we're going to try and work out where the horizontal is, we need to use the clinometer mode of this. So I've got it aligned east-west and I've made sure that the protractor part, the graduated part, is at the bottom, not at the top, but at the bottom. What we're then going to do is we're going to put the clinometer on the bedding surface like this and you've got to make sure that this part here is coming straight up vertically or else the clinometer bit that swings down the bottom will get stuck. So this has got to be vertical, dead straight up. And I'm going to move this around so that the red arrow that's dangling down here that marks the vertical is pointing at zero on here. Got it upside down. <laughs> what pillock? Right, hang on. Try it again. Um, I could have tried bluffing, but anyway. There we go. And what you do then is you draw a straight line. Okay. Now that is the strike. So I'll write on here. Now when you're doing field work, initially when you're first learning how to do this, you can, you, you can mark this line on maybe with some chalk and when we're say on a field trip like Aaron or in, uh, in Herne Bay, you can mark it on with some chalk, that washes off in the next rain. So there's our direction of strike. The dip by definition is at 90 degrees to the strike, so we can use this like a, to create our 90 degree angle, we'll do a 90 degree angle like that. I mark a line in there. If you want, you can put a little arrow there. And that's the dip going off down there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to measure that direction. You know, you could walk off in that direction. It's in a particular um, compass direction. Equally, you could walk in that direction. Doesn't matter, but I'll explain what we need to, which one we choose in a minute. So here we go. We're going to measure the strike. We're going to now use the compass as a compass. We're going to lay the edge of the compass so it is parallel with that black line. And notice how I've got the compass dead flat horizontal. So if I put a, a, um, you know, a bead of water on there, it would sit there. It wouldn't fall off like there. Nice and horizontal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this bezeled bit around here so that Fred, the north arrow, matches up with, the, with his bed, which is the red arrow, which is in the base plate here. So I'm gonna uh, turn them both around. So Fred is in his bed. Now, if I bring this a bit closer, will you be able to see that, do you reckon? Try a little experiment, right? I'm just gonna bring this up close. Can you zoom down? It. You can't see him? No. no. All right, okay, you just have to trust me on that one. And so Fred is in his bed. So the two red bits are, can you pick it up and kind of look? Look at it, yeah, see? If you can't take them out into Mohammed, well, I can't remember where it goes now. This is special steady cam that we've got here. If you have a look down there, can you see how, if I just move it, you can see there's, they're not in, t in cooked it together. If you move it around there, can you see? Yes, the camera person's nodding, Sarah. Uh, okay, excellent. So, oh, hang on, you better stay actually, because what we need to do is you can need to read off the number either at this end where there's a, a, a white line or at that end. We choose the one with the smallest number. If you have a look in there, you can see it's very close to the 40. Can you see the 40? Camera up and down. Yes, good. Um, and so we read that off, and in fact, it is 41 degrees. Okay, thank you. You can go back now. So that's 41 degrees. Now whenever we measure a strike, it's always as a three figure number. So how do we deal with that if we got a 41? So we write in 41 and we put a zero in front of it. Actually I'll put write it down here. So our strike is zero four one. We're then gonna put a slash there because we're gonna do the dip next to it. 
So there's our strike, 0, 4, 1. We always take the smaller number. We could have um, measured it as um, 221, I think, uh, but we take the smaller number. Oh, hang on, here it is. Yeah, 221, but we always take the opposite, whichever is the smallest number. And we always do it as a three-figure number. Let's start, try the dip now. Now the dip we do as, again, we need the compass mode. So if you remember, we do it so that we align east and west in here. And we might need to come in close in a minute. We're ready. Okay, so we're going to put this in here. This is a smooth operation. As I move, the camera moves around. And we're going to uh, put it there. So it's probably best if you actually look around that, that side there. And what you should be able to see over there is there's that red arrow down vertically and it's pointing at one of the back one of the lines there and it looks to me like it's at 29 degrees so that means that this angle of slope is 29 degrees from the horizontal okay so that's the dip so we're going to write the dip down as 29 The dip is always a two-figure number. And the other thing we've got to do now is the direction, because this can dip off down there in that, excuse me, didn't think that one through. Um, so we've got to get the, uh, the dip direction. Obviously it's a direction, so we have to go back to uh, using this as a compass. So what we do, we can get the pointy end of the compass here, pointing in the direction of dip, which is off down there. We put Fred back in his bed, you know how we do that, so I'll just put Fred back in his bed. This time, we don't actually need a number. We just need to know whether it's north, east, south, west, south, west, and so on. Now this one actually is in between north, north is this way, west is that way. It's actually northwest, this direction. So I'll write N, W. Okay, so there we have our strike and a dip. Our strike, 0, 4, 1, is a direction. 29 is the angle that the dip is from the horizontal. And northwest is this direction off down there that the beds are actually dipping in. Okay, so we've used our compass chronometer. You know the main bits. We may have a closer look at this maybe on another uh, video later. And this is how we do our strike and dip. You will be assessed on this both in Herne Bay, you'll have to show that you can do this, and in Aaron as well. Now in Aaron, uh, we'll spend all week practicing these as well as other things. Um, but you need to be able to record them correctly in your notebook, um, and um, obviously then tr eventually transfer this information back onto a map to make a geological map. Okay, I think that will do it. So I'll probably show you a close-up of, of how to use this another time. And then we're going to have a look at how to describe igneous rocks in the field, sedimentary rocks in the field, metamorphic rocks in the field, and perhaps how to deal with um, um, describing and drawing igneous intrusions in the field and faults. So maybe, you know, four or five other things to do. Well done.